Hi guys. It is March 20th, 2020. And I hope that you all are doing well. I know that most of us are hunkered down, uh, just kind of weathering this coronavirus pandemic. Um, we are socially distancing. And um, so, yeah, we're all just kind of huddled up in our houses and doing the best we can. Um, and it's because of that that I kind of wanted to do another video um, and just try to kind of offer some encouragement, some hope, and um, help you find your center in this storm. Um, so many of you know that I am a psychology student. Um, and it never fails that whatever class I'm taking, it always seems to speak to whatever is going on in the world or in my own personal life at that time. So um, I'm really experiencing a lot of synchronicity in these classes and I'm finding that very empowering, very refreshing and um, also just motivating. It, it motivates me when I learn things that can help other people, especially when it comes to things like anxiety or emotional struggles. You know, when I learn stuff um, that can help anyone in those kinds of areas, my passion is to share that. And so I really try to um, follow really solid sound people and really educate myself um, just so that way I can be a better person and help you on your journey so that you can help someone else on their journey. And um, I just think that's really important. And I think it's especially important with what's going on right now. Um, so I am reading in my textbook. Um, it is a social psychology textbook and it is by Thomas Heinzen and wind good friend um, I am reading about the power of groups and the benefits that groups offer to individuals and so what I want to do is share with you some of the things that I read this evening and to just kind of translate that um, to what's going on in our world right now and hopefully maybe you know kind of convey some tidbits that you can grab a hold of and um, just kind of help make the world a better place right now I know that's definitely you know what I want to do so hopefully you'll you'll join me in that so anyway in this text I'm reading it's in chapter 8 and there is this study going on where a man named Stanley Schachter back in 1959 um, was doing research and he was wanting to convey the benefits of belonging to a group and so he decided he wanted to um, test the hypothesis that Misery loves company. <laughs> I get really cracked up about that because I'm just like, if you look at Facebook, it just seems like misery loves company because, you know, you post something negative and you'll have like 100 comments and 100 likes and people just really jumping on the bandwagon, which I'm not saying that's not understandable in a lot of what we're going through, but I think we're all familiar with that old adage that misery loves company and so I, th I think it's really interesting that someone decided to test that as a hypothesis. So um, anyway, he decided that he wanted to test this hypothesis that misery loves company and he was able to demonstrate that one of the benefits of being in a group or belonging to a group is that we feel safe when we're threatened. So kind of process that, process that for just a minute. I mean, think about what the globe 
is feeling right now. We are definitely in this high anxiety state. We're being encouraged to be calm. We need to be calm so that way we can be powerful. Um, but yeah, just feeling safe when threatened. And that is one of the benefits of belonging to a group. And so in this, in this experiment that he performed, he did this, he tested it by threatening study participants with the possibility of electric shock. And so sure enough, the threatened people clustered together. When they thought they were going to get shocked, they kind of all just, you know, kind of curled up, backed up against each other and demonstrated that that gave them a sense of safety. And so we, we see by that, that when there's a threat, right now think about the threat that we're under of COVID-19, coming together provides a sense of safety. But coming together is the very thing that we are encouraged not to do right now, physically anyway. Um, and this is kind of where social media comes in. Um, I am working on a post on my blog, The Catalyst, and I kind of uh, mention how for, you know, all the ills and the um, negative impact to self-esteem that the rise of social media has dealt us, the one redeeming quality, at least one of the redeeming qualities that we are seeing emerge from social media is the fact that it gives us the ability to connect. It gives us the ability to find our people, to be in our groups, and that gives us the ability, the gift of being able to um, procure a sense of safety, right? So I'm really thankful, super thankful for social media right now. Um, it kind of almost makes me want to, you know, wish that I'd never said anything bad about social media because it is so powerful right now. Um, and it's just kind of the place to be. It's where we can congregate. It's where we can uplift and encourage each other, empower each other, share good information and um, just really kind of navigate our way through this. Now, something else interesting that I wanted to share um, about groups and the power of groups. So we saw that in that study by Schachter that people would indeed, if they felt threatened, they would indeed find a sense of safety when they came together. Now, what's interesting about that is two years later, there's another study, another experiment conducted by Sarnoff and Zimbardo. This was in 1961. And um, so what they did was first they replicated the Schachter study, right? But then they decided to use um, sort of like an experimental manipulation that made people feel anxious instead of afraid. Process that. And so what they found during that study was that anxious people did not tend to cluster with other anxious people. Okay? I don't know about you, but I have for many years suffered from anxiety disorder. So I, when I read this statement in this textbook, my mind kind of went back to different instances where um, I found myself wanting to be with someone, but only someone who was a calm kind of a person, an empowering kind of person. Yes, I appreciate being around people who understand social anxiety, who understand anxiety disorder, panic disorder. Um, I appreciate 
um, being around other people who get that because unless you've walked in those shoes you really just don't know how crippling and debilitating that can be and so people sometimes sadly people who haven't been on that journey sometimes they will look at people who have and feel like it's all in their mind or they need to just stop being anxious um, and for those of us who have kind of been there we know that that's not possible so it, it takes work right it takes work it takes therapy it takes cognitive um, behavioral therapy um, it's just it's not something that comes naturally to us so anyway in this study they found that um, anxious people did not tend to cluster with other anxious people and so you know there's this question of well, well what's going on here do anxious people want to be left alone no anxious people don't want to be left alone um, anxious people want to be around people who are calm and I think that it's really interesting that you have these two different motivations and we understand that um, anxiety still leads to a desire to be with others but not in the same way that fear or threat does so unlike fear anxiety makes us want to be surrounded by people who are not anxious right so it seems like there's both this um, motivation of fear anxiety they both make us want to affiliate with others but when we're afraid we like to be with people who feel the same way and so that can help us bond together against a common enemy think back to the people who were being threatened with electric shock right so you know when there was threat of being shocked there's just this sort of instinct within everybody to kind of bond together and strength in numbers to combat a common enemy but it's not like that with people who have anxiety so um, you know it's it's just this different dynamic uh, but but either way we understand um, that there is power there's power in groups there is power in being with with other people and so after I read that what I wanted to do was just kind of reach out encourage whoever will listen to this video I don't know many people might no one might but if you come across this video I want to encourage you to be a beacon of hope um, right now there's so much doom and gloom um, and there are so many people who have anxiety and right now more than ever we need anchors we need um, people who have the passion the desire the drive the calm the center to help other people find their center it's a very disorienting time that we're in right now um, one of the other benefits of um, be belonging to a group is identity in America we're very 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 much about individualism right it's all about me it's all about you it's just we're very individualistic in America and believe it or not you wouldn't think it maybe but belonging to group a group whether that's like citizenship ethnic group a football team um, a faith community a family system these groups can take you know so many different forms but having that sense of belonging also contributes to our sense of identity and so right now under this threat that we're under of COVID-19 the coronavirus um, it's disorienting for us in that um, the greatest precaution that we can take is the social distancing the 
tearing apart from our groups, right? We've got workplaces that are closed. We've got faith um, communities, churches that are closed. Um, restaurants are closed unless it's like delivery or pickup, uh, drive through. And so there is definitely this threat to connection, which is what contributes to our identity. And so when that's threatened, um, it can definitely be very disorienting. So anyway, I hope that you found these tidbits interesting. I hope that you will be very intentional about being a beacon of hope and really thinking through um, the power of group right now on your social media. I hope that you will reach out to people who, um, you know, maybe tend to be anxious and just offer them a sense of calm. I mean, there's so much that we can't do right now. And just doing that one thing and helping another person kind of find their center again in the midst of all that's going on, that's that's a huge gift and um, it's just a huge blessing and I believe that um, that goodness will come back to you in return because of that it's one of the most powerful things that we can do um, and I'm so thankful also too for there's so many um, online businesses um, that are kind of going um, I'm sorry, so many businesses that are typically like offline that are going online and reaching out to people in our community um, with free virtual services like yoga classes, church services. Um, so people really are just really, really reaching out. And then also there's people in the community who are just um, being so extremely courageous and they're doing grocery shopping for the elderly or for people who are immune compromised. They're putting themselves out there to make sure that their neighbor has what they have need of. And so in light of all that, you know, maybe those are some things that you can't do. Maybe you say, I don't have a business. I can't go virtual with anyone. Um, I'm immune compromised. I can't be out helping people like that. But the one thing that you can do is offer someone a sense of belonging and offer someone a sense of empowerment. So I just want to take the time and encourage you to be a beacon of hope um, because we, we really, really are better together, right? All right, so I'm going to post my blog shortly on The Catalyst. It is on WordPress. I hope that you will check that out. I'll have some more details on there more thoughts on what's going on. Also, my YouTube channel, Cosette Contemplates. It is a place where I just kind of offer up what I'm contemplating, not trying to offer up any hard and fast opinions, um, anything like that. Um, I like to think that I am thinking through things with my fellow humans, right? I think it's um, a very empowering thing when you realize that you're just kind of thinking through things with other people. So you can go on there, check that out. Here's some things that I contemplate about. Um, also, I am on Instagram. You can find me under Chat Town Poet. That's C H A T T T O W N underscore Poet. And of course, on Facebook at Cousin. Okay. Hope you guys have a great, great night, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.